is Erin and Simon with Assets and Arbitrage. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the cost of living. Um, we do want to fundamentally build on opening up the algo as well as neuroeconomics. So Simon is going to dig just a little bit deeper today in some areas of cost of living that we should examine just a bit more closely. Yeah, so we've been talking about cost of living in some of our uh, other episodes mm -hmm. just for the arbitrage, right? But we just wanted to um, kind of dig into some of the what cost of living really is and by definition and some of the factors that they take into consideration in the indices. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got cost of living. Let's talk about the definition of cost of living. Cost of living re refers to the amount needed to cover basic expenses, right? That's simple. That, that, that's simple. Such as food, shelter, transportation, and health care. These are some of the major things that are um, taken into consideration in the cost of living index. Food, shelter, transportation, health care. Right. But however, cost can of living can vary, you know, significantly across regions of uh, cost of living indices. Um, they help better understand. Um, well, well, they help better understand the quality uh, uh, and to quantify the differences. Cost of living indexes are also used by employers when determining wages of government agencies, when determining need for interventions such as adjustments to Social Security benefits individuals and other metrics so you know we have a thing called cola right is it cost of living adjustment mm -hmm. okay so that so you'll have a cost of living adjustment and um so go ahead if you want to talk about that well i was going to say when we were in the military and i don't know if um you had that in the fire department when that federal or city or state um, entity was doing the examination, they would often give us a cost of living allowance to adjust for mm -hmm. the increase in the cost of living. Yeah, and the cost of living in the place that you were stationed at, mm -hmm. right? Because you had no, um, uh, really didn't have to say so where you're going to be stationed. So, for example, um, you know, we were stationed in San Antonio where the cost of living um, is closer to the baseline. And then, you know, if you get... Uh, orders to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. cost of living goes up mm -hmm. considerably, so then they're going to give you that COLA, as we used to call it. So let's talk about the kind of cost of living index. Now, it's calculated by determining a baseline, right? So when you are comparing the cost across the states, the average cost of living in the United States, the baseline is set at 100 100 is the baseline. So if you pull up these charts and you're looking across states and or countries, 100 is the baseline. OK, and then um, then the states are then measured against the baseline. So, uh, for example, like they say here in the article, if a state with a cost of living of 200, that is twice as expensive mm -hmm. as the national average. Mm -hmm. So the baseline is the national average. And so that's something you want to keep in mind. And, you know, that's across the United States. But we will also look at it across um, different countries. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to say anything here? No, I just think it's interesting the way they established the baseline at 100. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see you got to do the percentage. So y'all percentage game needs to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's rate adjusted. Sure. And, and you have to understand that, too, because people who are talking about um, certain things about, you know, um, salaries and things like that, mm -hmm. it's rate adjusted in different areas. So if you had a certain salary in a place that had a higher cost of living, you know, above the baseline, then maybe your salary doesn't have the purchasing power that it would somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, that's understandable. So we're going to um, we're gonna read off some more statistics. So we want to take a closer look at the national cost of living to better understand across state. So across the average household in the United States spends 61000 $334 a year on expenses. That's the average household across the United States. And on average, 34.9% of the spending, or what they say, you know, to put out to a, uh, you know, a, a money is $1,784 okay. per month is dedicated to housing. 
Um, the median cost. So the median cost of a single family home in the United States is $273,992. So basically $274,000 is the median cost for a single family home. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment is $1,164. So if we're just giving you some perspective, and then we're going to go break it down. The average American household dedicates 16% of their income on transportation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and which is, they say averages out to $9,826 a year. So um, what that would be is, you know, you get it, your car note, um, insurance, mm -hmm. gas, uh, maintenance, stuff like that. Annual health care costs average another $5,177. Mm -hmm. So food, groceries, eating out, averages $7,317 or $609 per month. Mm -hmm. So, and the average monthly cost of utilities is about $370. So, nationwide, the median household income is $67,521 a year. Mm -hmm. While the personal, so when they say household, you know, that's just um, the price speaking of a uh, Couple, a married couple, More uh, than family, one person, not and, right. While a, a personal income for individuals is thirty five thousand eight hundred and five dollars. Um, the living wage of the United States. So, what's the living wage? It's sixty eight thousand eight hundred eight dollars. But living wage really is saying wages that you can live a reasonable life on, where you are not um, below the poverty line. And, you know, that's that's pretty important. You know, what you want to, we're just talking about some of the different things, but we want to go back and um, just clarify a couple things. I want to clarify a couple things because we were talking about the um, things that constitute maybe uh, the cost of living index, right? Mm -hmm. So the cost of living index, they say... Um, how you can use it. The main things they they take into consideration with the cost of living is housing, food, transportation, health care, mm -hmm. taxes, mm -hmm. child care, and education. So these are the things that they take um, into the most consideration of your cost of living index. Um, so did you want to say anything about that? No, I was just saying I'm glad that they kind of broke those down because a lot of people would consider the housing, the food, and the transportation, but they would ignore health care, taxes, child care. And if their kids go to public school, they kind of feel like, well, if I'm not paying tuition for private school or mm -hmm. tuition in general, okay. I don't have um, a cost of living expense for education when they actually do. Mm. Okay. And what about um, as far as the taxes, because we speak a lot about taxes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you get out here, you start building your wealth, uh, building up your assets. You, 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 sometimes you need a, a tax haven, right? So taxes are a big deal. Also, um, even within the United States, you have places like the state of California mm -hmm. that will heavily tax you. And then you have places like people like to go to um, Florida and Texas, yes. you know, where there is no state income tax, mm -hmm. I believe, right? So, um, you know, there are tax havens within your country, right? And we talk about it a lot. You know, you can go to these other places. And when I say other places, I mean other countries. And, you know, have some kind of tax haven from your tax burden. Because mm -hmm. I'm always going to call it a tax burden. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, oh, well, you have to pay. No, it's a burden. It's a burden on you to pay these taxes. Um, United States, we talked about this one of, the few countries that has citizen-based tax. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no matter where you are, if you're a United States citizen, you will be taxed. Mm -hmm. You will be taxed. You will have to pay. What would you say? How, how did you used to say it? What? You, something about paying Caesar what? Oh, pay unto Caesar what is Caesar and pay unto God what is God. Yeah, you're going to pay unto Caesar. <laughs> you're going to be taxed if you're a United States citizen. So just understand that. 
Um, let, let me get back into this, though. We want to keep it moving. So, um, like I said, the baseline is 100, right? So that would be the baseline. So you look at these charts. Um, you'll have these different charts where they will give you um, different costs of living in different areas. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over some of the states, the United States, right? So let's go to our chart. We're going to go down to the chart. And, and I'm going to do my best to put this in the uh, description. Uh, see if we can have it in here. So we go to the chart. This is a very nice chart. And this is on the website, worldpopulationreview.com. So what they have is this 22. 2022, about every state. So you have an overall cost index, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then you have four things that they put in there. Um, groceries, which is just food, but groceries, housing, utilities, transportation. Mm -hmm. um, then you will have to probably also add uh, miscellaneous, mm -hmm. you know, because you have miscellaneous spending. So 100 is the, it is the index. So when you get to 100, the state of Minnesota overall cost index is 100. Mm -hmm. So then you say, well, Minnesota will be the baseline. Mm -hmm. And then, so let's go over a few states so we can just get some perspective, right? You have a state like uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of our uh, good brothers and sisters live in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, their cost index is 88.8, .8, which is very low. That's a good cost index. Um, I mean, I'm not familiar with Georgia, but um, a lot of people live there. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it seems like you can get, especially for housing, mm -hmm. you can get great... Uh, bang for your buck. Their housing is 70 point, 74.4. So that's really good as far as housing goes. Mm -hmm. um, this is Georgia. Do you want to say anything about that? I was just going to say, um, I think Georgia's so low because the only city in Georgia that's expensive now is Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And it yeah, just, Atlanta. just within the past few years, the it started to kind of rise yeah. in cost of living. It's out of control now as far as the housing. I don't know. If you had a chance to look at that, yeah, that's um, that's interesting because what's going to happen is Atlanta um, will probably bring the housing index up, mm -hmm. but if you lived in other cities right. uh, outside of Atlanta, you you probably would um, get better housing mm -hmm. prices, mm -hmm. uh, utilities, transportation, all these things look um, in order. So that's a great that's a great place. We go down. Um, you got a place like. Uh, well, what would you say? You got a place like Ohio. We spent mm -hmm. many, many years in Ohio. Ohio's uh, index, their overall index is 91.3, which is good. You know, that's good. It's below, you know, so it's below that 100. Um, and their housing index is 76.5. So it is also below that 100. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, these are interesting. You know, you have people, uh, we know a lot of people who live in um Louisiana, their index is 93. Mm -hmm. South Carolina is 93. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we say, when we get to the median, it's 100 at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So then let's go down and see who's hired in Minnesota. Places that people tend to like. <laughs> uh, so you got places people like to live in New Jersey. Um, their, their index is 115.2. I don't know anybody who likes to live in New Jersey. Okay, well, people <laughs> live in New Jersey. Let's say. They live there. They I'm live New Yorker, there. So. But uh, but um, their housing index is one thirty six point six. Just meaning it's uh, thirty six percent above the median average. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you're getting that right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I don't know. I never. Uh, I'm not. I don't know about New Jersey. I only been there a couple <laughs> times, uh, so I keep it moving on New Jersey, y'all. <laughs> Uh, Maryland. A lot of people like to live in Maryland. Mm -hmm. I've been to Maryland many times. Um, their their index is 124, but their housing index is 165.9. Nice. So now you, you're seeing a little, you know, you lost arbitrage, mm -hmm. right? You're overpaying for um, property mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And um, so let's look at uh, let's get to the whew, let's get to the last three. You know what they are, y'all. So we're going to have to go in. So California. Mm -hmm. A lot of people live in California. People love California. 142 is their um, index. Mm -hmm. But their housing index is 201.9. So it's double the median. right? So you're going to pay double. And that's in California as an entire state. Hey. We're not talking about San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. right? Because if, if you just... Um, 
if you if you zeroed in on them, the uh, housing index would be a lot higher. But it's those three that have that average. Yeah, it's so high. They get added up high, and, and the same thing with New York. One forty eight is their is their <laughs> index. So you know, forty eight percent above the mean, the mm-hmm. median. But their housing index is two thirty. So now you're talking about double. Mm-hmm. And um, like she said, it's probably going to be mostly New York City, kind of mm-hmm. Long Island pushing up that yep. number. And that's why you end up in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> cool and then, of course, we got the highest one, right? Mm-hmm. Which is Hawaii, which is 193. So Hawaii's index, just living, cost of living index is double the, me- the median. That's crazy. And, you know, everybody loves Hawaii, like to go out and, you know, vacation there and hang out. But now let's look at their housing index. It's 315. So it's three times the median, right? So this is what you get. You know, this is the cost of living index when they're looking across um, these things. And like I said, the grocery, housing, utilities, transportation. And um, what would you say? Is it on miscellaneous? Well, we would say miscellaneous, but miscellaneous. they don't have it on the Yeah, miscellaneous. So, um, but weren't you surprised to see Hawaii? I I thought California and New York would have been. I know Hawaii is expensive. I think because Hawaii is smaller. And it's that, an island. Well, it's islands, and but those 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 cities can push the price up so much further. You know, New York's bigger, California's bigger. So even though you had those three major cities and. Uh, California, there's a lot more places in California where you can live. Cheaper, right, right. Cheaper. But I was just saying right, that right, right. I was shocked to see that it's three times. And it's three times because... Um, I mean, it was the last one on the list. I was surprised. I was just saying, I didn't know if maybe you weren't shocked, but I was. I was no, no, it's an island, so you know you have problems getting stuff there. And yeah, the price yeah. Of, you know, the price of cost of food and stuff like that. And understand, too... Um, and this may change over time, but uh, understand places like California and New York, what you have is you have these cities that push the price up. Yeah. And people are forced to live in these cities. Mm-hmm. But now that you have remote work mm-hmm. and uh, work from home, you don't have to necessarily live in Manhattan. Right. You can live somewhere else in New York. You don't have to live in um Los Angeles or San Diego. You can live somewhere. Yeah. But I mean, now, you know, you got your certain places like Silicon Valley where they might want you to be, uh, you know, be on campus, stuff like that. Google. Mm -hmm. So they, you have to live there, but, uh, yeah, people will be able to move around a little bit because of this remote work and not have to live in these expensive cities, which helps people. It helps people's, um, it just helps their, their life, their mm-hmm. how would you call it? Your your quality your of life, life, right? You know. So um, yeah, we'll go into a couple other things. Um, let me see what else. So um, let's 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 move. Oh, did you want to say something mm-hmm. before I? You know, I'm, it's charts. You know, I won't keep it too boring. Oh no, uh uh-uh. uh. I think I mean I was gonna say the same thing about Maryland. Maryland, yeah. It's because they have so many government workers in D.C., high-income earning workers in D.C. that Mm -hmm. a lot of them live in Maryland for proximity purposes. So it pushes that up. That was kind of high. Uh, Yeah, Maryland's was a little high, Mm -hmm. but um, we've been out there uh, many times, and we understand that, you know, the the, I mean, really, it's the housing. Mm-hmm. It's really what it, it's the housing, mm-hmm. you know, the other things, you know, we, we know about groceries and health care, stuff like that. It's the housing out in Maryland mm-hmm. that pushes that index up really high. Uh, so we're going to go now. Let's now once again, let's take this index and let's take it across. Let's take it international. Mm-hmm. Right. So 100 is the um, what would you call it? the baseline? baseline? So 100 is the baseline. This is the baseline across countries. Um, around the world. So we'll start at the top, and this is a country we spoke of in an episode not too long ago that was giving some incentives for um, digital nomads and remote workers, Bermuda. So Bermuda's cost index is 157.6, right? And with America being the baseline at 100. So um, I guess if you go to Bermuda, you're going to have uh, I mean, it's going to be a higher cost of living, which is 
as calculated nine thousand and about seven hundred dollars per month mm -hmm. was what you would need to live in Bermuda. But just like basic living. Um, you know, you have a house, a car, uh, be able to send your kids to school, health care, right. you know, those things that they get groceries. And that statistic right there to me is a good reason why we shouldn't romanticize certain places without looking into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there may not be an arbitrage for you in Bermuda. No, it may not. I mean, unless you're getting paid a ton of money, um, that's pretty high cost of living. So let's uh, let's look at some other countries. Uh, you got a country like uh, well, what would you say? So a lot of people <clears throat> in the uh, in the uh, people who leave countries, the uh, digital nomads and all that, New Zealand. So New Zealand is a is a, it's a country that people you know. I hear a lot of good things about New Zealand. Um, it is one seventeen, so you need about thirty seven hundred, about thirty eight hundred dollars a month to live in New Zealand. Great place. We talked about Luxembourg, a very small country in Europe. You need it's one thirteen. You need about sixty eight hundred dollars a month to live there. Um, uh, we got a place like Sweden and Finland, so they're number fifteen and sixteen on the list, one oh nine and one oh eight respectively. Mm -hmm. You need about $4,900 a month to live in Sweden. Now, we talked about this. Sweden is very high on the happiness index. You know, a lot of, I mean, you, if you go check that out, there's a happiness index of um, places to live. Mm -hmm. um, also, Finland, uh, which is 108. It's about $4,500 a month. Mm -hmm. Very high. <laughs> very, very high on the happiness index of countries. <laughs> But uh, but let's get to it. Let's get to these countries where we can get some arbitrage and we can start talking about it. Exactly. We get to these countries. That, so a country that I always talked about, and we, I mean, we got time. Chile. So Chile, you know, Chile in South America. Uh, great country, beautiful country. Uh, you know, right there um, on the Andes Mountains, mm -hmm. and also right there in the ocean. So their uh, index is sixty-two point nine. So twelve hundred fifty dollars a month USD. Say, so, okay, that's a beautiful country, right? Then go down another country we've talked about, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Beautiful country. We used to live in Costa Rica. It's a beautiful country. Um, it's 57.7. .7. So that's about $1,026 per month. So, you know, that's, that's Costa Rica. And there's a lot of people who go there, um, a lot of retirees. Mm -hmm. You can take your pension there and you can live comfortably, you know, and have a, a great quality of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about where we are presently, Mexico, 54.7. So they're talking about 800, and, I'm sorry, $782 a month. Barely what do you think about that? T t tell me about it. It's Mexico. Tell me about that. Barely $800 a month for basic living. Ba but when I say, when we say basic, though, it's the things that you need. You have a house. You yes. have, you know, it shelter, is. clothing, so Bare food. essentials. Now, I will say this. Mm -hmm. Where we are here, because it's, a lot of the country is rural, obviously not all of the country is as sensational as Mexico City. Not Mexico City and Cancun and stuff. It's more. It's right. mostly rural. But here where we are, they have, I'm going to call it an efficiency apartment for, I think it's $124 a month. Mm. 2,500 pesos. No, it's 2,000 pesos. So it's, 2, pesos. it's less than $100 a month. Well, that one was two thousand pesos, yeah. but I thought Ray's was twenty five hundred. His was a little. But bit that was more. he had two bedrooms. Oh, yeah, there was two, a second bedroom. Yeah, bedrooms, okay, so. see, look at that. You get two bedrooms for one hundred twenty five dollars yeah. a month. It's nice too. It's refurbished. <laughs> it's refinished, and uh, you got nice, uh, you know, like a stove and mm -hmm. fridge, and so. Um, so yeah, that works. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's the cost of living, and now, like we said. We talked about um, some of the states. The same thing applies here because if uh, you are in the bigger cities, because most people who come to Mexico, um, they tend to like to go to places like Cancun, mm -hmm. uh, Puerto Vallarta, uh, Mexico City, Acapulco. Mm -hmm. And so these places will be more expensive. Yes. And make no, uh, but if you get rural, you're going you're gonna to get you some, some arbitrage. And that's what we like. That's what we're about. We're about the arbitrage. Because you're going to get a large place with lots of land. Yeah. And whereas in Mexico City, you're going to get a really nice place, but it is going to be in a building. It's the concrete jungle. Yeah, concrete jungle. So, sure. And you're paying for conveniences because everything is within a walk or Uber ride away. Uh, 
So, so we're gonna go to another country that I, I was always high on. Um, you know, they, they've had some political upheaval, but Ecuador. So Ecuador has a fifty-one point nine cost of living index, which is what they're saying is four hundred ninety-four dollars a month, right? And so, you know, I've done a lot of research on Ecuador. Um, uh, there's very, you know, it's a very beautiful country, beautiful landside. Then you have the uh, the coastal is right out there by the Galapagos Islands, right? So, um, you know, for, you go for five hundred dollars a month. You can have a nice quality of living in Ecuador. Um, like we said, there's been some political upheaval. So, I mean, I, I haven't been keeping up with that. I don't know how that is going. Um, I'll do another one. It's something that I researched. A place called, a country called Serbia, 51.2. So, $703 a month. Now, um, for my research, you know, and I'm just keeping it real. Uh, if you were black, you... It, didn't seem like you were going to be received very well out there. So um, the arbitrage and the money is there, but how's the quality of life, right? So it's there, though. If you're willing to put up with it, uh, that, 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 you know, that's up to each individual. So let's get, uh, to, let's go to the motherland, right? Yeah. South Africa, 47.1, which is $537 a month. This is South Africa. Right. So now South Africa is going to fall also into what we talked about before, because you got the places, Pretoria, Johannesburg, mm -hmm. where the cost of living is very high. Mm -hmm. So if you could find places in South Africa, like you call the bush or I don't know, you know, the countryside, whatever, rural areas, then you will get some arbitrage. But if you want to live in those those two main cities. Pretoria and South, uh, what was it? Pretoria and um, Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Yeah, you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay in those cities. So, um, and it's because there's a lot of wealth there, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but it's like a, you know they got those two cities with very high mm -hmm. cost of living, mm -hmm. and then if but the other places you could probably get a great arbitrage. Uh, you know, I don't know how the services would be. You know, you got to deal with you know internet, electricity, how that is once once you get out there in the bush. But that's all part of the process. You just get out here and, and see what it is. Uh, another place a lot of people like is Brazil. Mm -hmm. Now, Brazil is a very large country, which um, which is important because it's kind of like um, the United States in regards to you just have different pockets of culture mm -hmm. and stuff across Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, their index is going to be 46.9, $643. But I don't think that that is in um, Rio de Janeiro <laughs> and or um, Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. right? You got to find somewhere, you know, kind of out in the middle of nowhere in Brazil to catch that arbitrage. And if you're okay with that, you know, no big deal. But, you know, if you're a city person, if you want to live down in Rio, <laughs> then you're going to pay. You're going to pay because you got to because once you get to the big cities also, remember, once you get to big cities, not only do you have to pay, but you have to. It, what we talk about safety you got to live in probably yeah. the better neighborhoods mm -hmm. right so you don't want to just be living in rio in any old neighborhood you know so, so you got to try to get to the better neighborhood so now you're going to pay a little bit more it's a premium you know it's a premium um i hear a lot about uh next one number 57 dominican republic mm -hmm. uh, i hear a lot of people like to go down here i know a couple brothers i follow on youtube who had retired from their professions and uh bought uh, condos down there. So you got 45.8, which is 685 US dollars per month, right? So, you know, man, you got, you got a lot of options out here, right? There's a lot of options, but let's get to the, I mean, uh, we have, I'll talk about this one. I mean, I don't keep you too long, too many countries. Colombia, spent a lot of time in Colombia. Um, their cost of living index is 41.9. And so remember, like we said, the baseline is 100. So you're down all the way to 41.9, dollars per month to live in Colombia, right? Same thing. Got your larger cities, Bogota, Medellin, and uh, Cartagena, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to pay more in those places. But if you find little pockets in Colombia, mm -hmm. right, then that's where you get your uh, you get your arbitrage. Mm -hmm. um, for my, we still we in the motherland, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Uh, so I know I know a couple good brothers living over there in Nigeria, 
41.8, they're going to tell you $175 per month, right? So Nigeria is going to, um, uh, Nigeria, <clears throat> so Nigeria is going to have Lagos, right? Lagos is one of like top five most populated cities mm -hmm. in the world, right? Yeah. So if you live in Lagos, uh, I don't know how your arbitrage would be, right? So you might have to get out in to the country, you know, to have that great arbitrage in Nigeria. Um, but a place like Nigeria would be good because you have a city like Lagos, mm -hmm. similar to uh, Mexico City, where if you lived out, but you could come down to Lagos and get things taken care of, whether it was health care, education, um, you know, anything, you know, digital, something that you need. You know, Lagos is a great city. Um, it is very heavily populated. So if you are, if you like big cities, that's a great great place to look into um you want to say anything i just i'm just going mm -hmm. through the cities all right so um you know we're the thailand a lot of a lot of people like to go to thailand we had 38.4 so that's about 605 dollars per month thailand so uh you have thailand a lot of people like to go over there um you know i'm not like i said i've said it before i'm not big on asia only because of the uh, time difference, mm -hmm. you know, nothing more, nothing less. We still have to do a lot of things across time zones, right? Yeah. From West Coast time, East Coast time. So when you go over there, you got that 12, 14 hour time difference. Mm -hmm. So I'm not crazy about, I mean, you know, I never say I wouldn't go over there, you know, once we get a little older, kids are grown and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, right now I like to try to stay within the, uh, the time zones of the United States as far as getting things done. And even that's a hassle. Yeah, even that's a hassle. I'd be confused like what time <laughs> stuff is happening. Um, we got a, a good country I love, I, I recommend is Bolivia. Mm -hmm. Bolivia. So Bolivia, you know, is a country uh, in Central uh, South America. Uh, their uh, index is 36.2. Uh, it was $280 per month. USD, right? So you can have a very nice quality of living. So take this into consideration. If they're saying 280, so uh, I want to make the math a little easier. 300, so 300 times 12 uh, is uh, $3,600. They're saying in Bolivia, you can live well there for $3,600 yearly. That's your yearly income. So imagine you went to Bolivia with what? 25,000. You're going to live like a king or a queen, <laughs> if you will. Um, we're going to go another country I like. Um, I, I, a lot of people aren't as big on, but we're going to talk about it. Nicaragua. Oh, so Nicaragua. So you go to Nicaragua, you're going to go to uh, the, 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 what's the, the capital, Managua. Mm -hmm. So Managua is the main city down there. This is 35.8 cost of living index. It means you need $168 per month. Right. And that's just like, when you say you say basic. Right. Mm -hmm. You're saying basic. Explain basic. What do you mean by basic? I have an apartment. OK. It may not be in a great condo. <laughs> um, I have money to eat food and I can afford to like buy clothes. I can afford to get the miscellaneous stuff. OK. So but it's a very basic quality of life. So let me ask you a question. So we say one hundred sixty eight dollars. I have no idea. If we took that up an order of magnitude to sixteen hundred and eighty dollars how much better would your quality of living it would be absolutely crazy exactly it's kardashian level <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'll feel like that you live like that nicaragua but like i said it might not be the safest place i've been there um uh i mean i'm okay there you know i'm a big black man but uh, i don't know if everybody's okay there, I'm not okay there. Uh, uh yeah yeah <laughs> so you know you gotta um Take all that stuff into consideration. We'll do a couple more. Um, I've seen a lot of, uh, which ones down here do you want to talk about? I mean, oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, let's talk about Egypt, right? So we're back on the motherland. Um, so now this is 27.2 is the cost of living index. About $293 a month mm -hmm. in Egypt. You no, know, so... Um, like we knew a person who lived in Egypt, yeah, and um, you know, she did not have the best time, mm -mm. and uh, it was a woman, and because you know you're dealing with um, <clears throat> it's a Muslim country, a, yeah, different culture, so you got to take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things about what we talk about with the flag theory. 
go where you're treated best. You know, yes, Egypt has a great cost of living, but how will you be treated there? And you have to take that consideration. You definitely have to take that consideration because um, saving of the money, uh, but if you're not going to be treated well on your everyday, you know, things that you go, you know, go out and do, your quality of life uh, suffers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are some of the better ones. Um, I mean, we can go, it's a whole bunch of countries. We can go over and over and all of them, but, um, you know, you, you got a place. No, nah, we're not going to talk about that one. Um, yeah, you got places here where you could just live for, if you made $2,000 a month, which in the United States is tough. It's tough to live on that. And you get over some of these other places. Oh, I missed one here, one of my other favorite countries I'm going to talk about. It'll be the last one. We're going to get up out of here. Uh, Paraguay. Paraguay. So Paraguay is in uh, uh, southern South America. Um, it's 38.6 on the cost of living index, which is about $445 a month. So, I mean, this is a great place. And Paraguay also offers um, great incentives. Um, as far as getting residency and or um, a second passport. So, yeah, we just wanted to name a couple. I will put this in the description so that you guys can kind of look at it and just, you know, get an idea of what's going on. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn over to her so she can go in and just, you know. Um, did you want to, we just want to clean up one more thing. Mm -hmm. Um, wages versus income. Oh yeah, we got to clean that up now. Thank you, thank you for reminding. Okay, so, so in, in these talks, you know, we have these talks. We speak with people, and um, a lot of times you hear uh, wages and income and salary. But I think people understand what salary is. Wages and income being used a little bit interchangeably, right? And one of the things that we like to say in our household: precision of language, right? So I'm just going to read this out real quick and we could talk about it. Wage and income are two words that often give people the idea of the same. They are often used interchangeably. But in reality, wage and income are very different from each other. In order to use two words correctly, one needs to know about each one of them specifically mm -hmm. to set them apart clearly and concisely. Mm -hmm. So... What is the big difference between wage and income? The main difference between wage and income is that wage is only paid in exchange for work. On the other hand, income can be acquired even without working. There are a few more specific things that will make them different, but that's the main difference, mm -hmm. right? So you, at wage, you will only be paid for your work. Income can come while you are not working, right? right? right. So, um, you know, famous quote, that, you know, we see thrown around in the um, economic uh, sphere is by Warren Buffett, right? If you don't learn how to make money while you're sleeping, mm -hmm. you're going to work till you die, mm -hmm. right? So that that's a, a thing about income versus wages. Uh, so, and... And, and why do we bring that up? And I mean, because we hear it, you know, I don't I don't really care for words being used interchangeably a little loosely, right? So... When we talk about wages, do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything or do you want me to just go I ahead? I think I'll say it at the end. Okay. When we talk about wages, so we're going to go over here. We're going to read uh, We're going to read a definition. You know, we're in the book. We're going to stay in the book. Uh, and, you know, and, and I just want to preface this. I'm not a, uh, <laughs> a communist or a Marxist, but I am going to read this definition. So you have something called a proletariat. So I'm I'm sure you guys are familiar with the proletariat. This is something that was uh, uh, postulated by uh, Karl Marx. Mm -hmm. So the proletariat is a social class of wage earners, those members of society who only possess a significant economic value in their labor power uh, or their capacity to work, right? The Marxist philosophy considers the proletariat to be exploited under capitalism, forced to accept meager wages in return for operating the means of production, which belong to the class of business owners. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, it, it, like I said, we're not Marxists <laughs> or anything like that, but it has a, um, the definition means something, mm -hmm. right? And so, on top of that, if we're talking about proletariat, we're going to bring up our good brother, 
No. Our great brother, freedom fighter Fred Hampton Sr., right, who fought for the people. That was his thing. He fought for the people, and we're going to give out a good quote that he had here, right? So, and then um, once I get his quote, I'm going to let you go in on. But uh, this is a quote by Fred Hampton Sr. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you'll remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep saying that. You're going to have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people. So as he was saying, he was a man of the people. A proletariat, which is wage earners. But let's keep it real. Just the working, the working man, mm -hmm. right? Wage earners. So it's, that's what I say. When you say proletariat, we're not trying to um, say anything bad. He, he's saying he was a man of the people, of the working people, the working class of the people. That is our uh, freedom fighter, Fred Hampton Sr. So, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, I just, I, you know, I went too long. I'm going to let you say what you got to say. Too long. <laughs> um, we did go long. Didn't, didn't no, but you know, long. I mean, is there anything um, else we need to get in there? Just quickly. Mm -hmm. We're always dealing and we're always fundamentally building on other shows. Mm -hmm. So, the cost of living allowance, understanding wages versus income, all of that um, is in relation to areas of activity that affect us as a community. Mm. This is the financial area of activity. Yeah. So understanding something as simple as the difference between wage and income is something that you want to go into your subconscious thinking. Right. It's one of the main reasons why you always hear people say, if you are a wage earner, which a lot of people are, W-2, um, earners are the majority of, I'm sure, the United States. Okay. You want to be able to have passive income mm. or multiple streams of income right. to supplement your wages, right? right? So it's just a mindset thing. And we just want to yeah. set things accurately and precisely so that we can get our minds right and start programming ourselves to do the things we need to do to get the most benefit. Yeah, and then if you are a wage earner, if that is what it is, be um, have what would you call it? Intention on your wages. You know, you hear these stories about people who work these jobs. You know, maybe as a janitor or something like that, and they retired with very, very hefty retirements, right? <laughs> because they had. They had an intention on the wages that they received, mm -hmm. right? So even if you are a wage earner, it's, I mean, nobody's saying anything bad about that. But what it is about, it's like, like we keep saying about chess, be strategic. So understand your position. Okay, so I'm a wage earner, this, but I have an intention for my wages so that we can build assets. And then, you know, there is an arbitrage, you know, now because, um, you know, the wage earner, because of that, the way it's spoken is more like... Um, People who worked at factories and things like that. Um, and you could be a wage earner now with a remote job. Yeah. And so that's the arbitrage. Mm -hmm. So now you can go to Nicaragua. Be careful. But you can go to <laughs> Nicaragua <laughs> and you can get some arbitrage and take your wages and build wealth. Right. And, you know, all the country we talked about. And even if you don't want to move through countries, and we talked about this before. Um, it, it seems like a, a novel concept, but people in America, I'm sorry, the United States of America, they move from state to state to get arbitrage, right? We talked about that. People, New Yorkers move to Florida. People are moving to Georgia. Um, <laughs> you know, people are leaving recently California to go to Texas. Oh, yes. You know, just getting that arbitrage. That, so, that is yeah. the arbitrage. Yeah, well, that, yeah that's, the, that's the new arbitrage. Florida is now almost as expensive. It wasn't that far behind Minnesota. Yeah, Florida was right there. It's 99. So, um, yeah, so people do it in the United States. It's not um, uncommon. No. It's just that when you do it from country to country, um, it becomes like a little bit, uh, it's, it's a harder, like, it's, it's easy to move from New York to Florida, but you move to another country, you got different languages, different cultures. So it just, it makes it harder to adapt. And so, uh, so people, uh, um, you know, that, that, that's a thing. You have to adapt if you're going to move to a new country. Um, like we said, you got to move across time zones or things like that, uh, language language barriers and things. But uh, it is worth looking into. 
and we're going to talk about uh, Act 60. We got a lot of shows in the chamber for y'all, but <laughs> we're going to talk about Act 60 in Puerto Rico because um, that's actually very attractive mm -hmm. because what happens is you get the, the feeling of living in another country, but you don't have to keep up residency and visas and all that stuff. And you get tax breaks on um, um, your income if you are a main, how they put it is a mainland United States citizen. And you also get tax breaks on your crypto and incentives to um, incorporate businesses uh, in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about, we got a couple other shows in the chamber. Um, we're going to talk about, she's still, she's going to do Bitcoin and the number zero and the correlation. Um, that paper by Robert Breedlove, great read. You've got, got, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, got time to check that out. Check out Robert Breedlove. Uh, I believe that paper is on medium.com. Uh, but yeah, check him out. He's a great, um, Bitcoin philosopher. Yeah, there's a go. Bitcoin philosopher. He's he's a great Bitcoin philosopher. Mm -hmm. um, we're also gonna we, we're still gonna get back to you with quantum field theory and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a great show. Just got to put a little work in there. It's, it, it, it's a little complicated, but we're gonna get to it. Um, also, we're gonna do uh, Bitcoin and uh, dark matter and dark energy. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be an interesting one. Y'all let me know how you like that one. And um, last but not least, we got our good brother that we have mentioned, Zoe Williams. Mm -hmm. Zoe Williams is a, um, a philosopher, um, an author, a relationship expert, um, what I like to refer to as a urban renaissance man. So we're going to interview him um, uh, coming up. So we're going to have that, check that out. Zoe Williams is going to break it down. He's going to talk about um, relationships and building wealth. So that that'll be a great show. So yeah, we, this is stuff we got coming, man. We we'll let y'all know, y'all y'all get y'all hit us up, give us feedback. Is there anything you want to say? We're gonna get up out the door. We didn't we didn't keep you too long. They are gonna enter the thirty six chambers because we got all the shows. <laughs> <in> the <laughs> um, the last thing I want to say is we do have um exclusive content on Simon Family Investment Ventures mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. So um, down in the description box, go ahead and click on the link, check out the um, exclusive content. We will make sure we have that for you guys every single week. Um, and lastly, we appreciate you guys joining us. We're okay. asking you guys to share our content. You can hit the like button. We love your comments. Mm -hmm. We love your emails. And we will see you guys on Wednesday. There we go. Bye. That's indeed.